Hi everyone, I hope you're well. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I edit my photographs in Adobe Lightroom. In particular, I'm going to be showing you the process that I use and how I use my own presets and brushes to give my images punch, contrast and vibrancy. So, let's crack on. Now the first thing to say is that I edit my images to give them a particular look and feel. In my case, I like my images to have contrast and vibrancy and I'm going to be showing you in this video how I do this using my presets and brushes. But one thing I want to make clear when talking about presets is that no one preset will ever get your images where you want them to be in just one click. Sadly, that is just impossible. We would all love to be able to click once on a preset and bang, everything is perfect, but I'm afraid for now anyway that just isn't possible I mean how often have you seen shiny new presets on a website and the before and after examples look amazing only for you to download them apply them to your photographs and and they look awful I know I've done that we've probably all been there I'm sure a preset is the starting point in a process it's like lying down the foundations which we then build on that is why the editing process is so important and once you understand the process you can start to develop a really really effective and efficient editing workflow in Lightroom. I have a simple three step process when I'm editing my images in Lightroom. Step one, I apply the preset. Step two, I make global changes. And step three, I use my brushes to finish the edit. So let's open Lightroom and I'm going to talk you through the presets that I use, the process and the brushes. Now the first thing you'll see is that my preset pack includes two colour presets and two black and white presets and in this video I'm going to show you exactly when and where I would use each of those presets and if we now look in the brushes you'll see that there are seven brushes. In a few moments I'm going to show you how I use those brushes but let me first just quickly introduce each of those brushes to you. So first up we have the bokeh brush which as the name suggests works really well when you have areas of bokeh in a photograph as it gives those areas much more punch. Next up is bring it back. I personally never like to completely lose detail in my photographs, whether that be in the highlights or in the shadow areas. Now if we do have areas of lost detail, Lightroom will tell us that if we have this box ticked, as the areas of lost shadow detail will show up in blue. If that happens, the bring it back brush will try and bring back those areas of lost shadow detail. Next up is the burn brush. The burn brush is awesome at further darkening down areas of a photograph. Now this works really well in areas which are already quite dark. I really love using this brush. Then we have the faces brush. This is the brush that I use the most. It does a few things, but the two main things that it does is it softens down the area where it's being used, as well as slightly bringing up the exposure and the shadows. And as the name suggests, this makes it a really excellent brush to use on faces like this. The Golden Gaze brush is one of my favourites and it is fantastic at warming up light so it works really well on sunset photographs or when there is already some warm light that you just want to make look even nicer and more photogenic. It's definitely one of my favourites. Next up is the Mr. Blue Sky brush. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing the song. As the name suggests, this brush works really well to bring out the blue in skies. It works particularly well if there's already a little bit of blue there and you want to make that sky really stand out and make it pop. If that's the case, Mr. Blue Sky is the brush for you. And lastly, we have the Save Highlights brush. This is very similar to the Bring It Back brush, but whereas the Bring It Back brush works on bringing back shadow detail, the Save Highlights brush works really well in areas that we're trying to retain detail in the highlights. Now, if you've already blown the highlights, then you, this brush won't help. But if it's on the edge or you just you want to bring it back a little bit more, then the Save Highlights brush works really well for that. Okay, so we are in Lightroom now. And what you're obviously looking at here is a straight out of camera raw file. So the first thing to do is to apply a preset. Now, as I mentioned, there are two color presets. Although I do have each of those two color presets for the different camera models here. I obviously 
this huge Sony, so I'm going to use one of these two. Now, I usually use the main preset for the majority of my images. However, with this photograph, I'm going to use the Lift in Shadows preset. The reason being that I like to use the Lift in Shadows preset if either the light is bad or it's a heavily backlit photograph, as this one is. So, first step, I'm going to apply that preset. The next stage now will be to look at doing global changes, which will tend to be exposure, white balance. However, with this photograph, I don't really think we need to do that. If anything, actually, I might just bring down the exposure slightly, but that's about it. Don't really need to do very much at all. So I'm now going to go to stage three, which is the brushes. And I'm going to apply two brushes for this photograph. First of all, I'm going to select the faces brush. As I mentioned, this brush is basically going to soften this area that I'm going to paint and also bring up the exposure slightly. So I'm just going to just go over Vicky's face here and a bit of Pete's face. Now we can now change the strength of what we've just applied. And by the way, if you press O on the keyboard, it will show you where we've um, drawn that area. And we can change the strength of it by using this slider here. So we can either make that brush much weaker by pulling the slider down or much stronger by pulling the slider up. I'm going to move it about here, I would say, but there is really no right or wrong. It's always personal preference. Let's put it about, we'll leave it about 33. I'm now going to apply a second brush. So I'm going to go to new and this time I'm going to use our golden gaze brush and I'm going to paint over now the areas of warm light and it's just going to really exaggerate that warm light and I think it makes it look really nice. And that's probably all I would do to this photograph. So let's just do a quick before and after. So we've very, very quickly gone from here to here just by following the stages. So we applied the preset, we then made global changes, and then we applied two of the brushes and we've made those changes. So let's go to another image now. Let's go to this photograph. Now again, I'm going to apply my preset first of all. This will be the main preset this time. Global changes for this example. I think I'm gonna bring down the exposure slightly. So let's just do that. And I'm also going to warm the image up slightly. Let's go to about 5,000 there maybe even a bit more let's go to about there that will do and the first thing i'm going to do here there's two things i want to do first i'm going to apply brushes this time i'm going to go to mr blue sky and this is going to exaggerate the blue in the sky as i mentioned earlier so we can just do that just makes the sky much more punchy and i also want to bring back the shadow detail down here in the in the puddle reflection so this time i'm going to go to the gradient filter and i'm going to go to bring it back and let's just go up there like that and you can see that it's just bringing back that detail now again if we want to change the strength of that I can just push up this slider and we can see more of the reflection and again that's probably all I would do to be honest it's a very quick process but we've gone from here to here now, as you see that there's a slight distortion when I go from the before and after, that is because my presets have built-in lens correction. So Lightroom knows what lens this was taken on and it's correcting the distortion for that lens. Now, I will just say at this point, my preset pack is available to buy and you can do so using the link down there in the description. All my Lightroom editing is now done using these presets and as you've already seen, the pack includes two color presets, two black and white presets and the seven brushes. But as well as that, you will also receive a link to a full 70 minute editing tutorial in which I go through in depth exactly how I use the preset to edit my images. And as I mentioned earlier, no preset will ever do everything that you want on its own. We all wish that they would, but unfortunately they don't. So the 70 minute video is like the instruction manual for my presets. So if you do buy my presets, please do take the time to watch that video because that way you will better understand understand exactly how to get the most out of the presets and the brushes. Again, the link is in the description. Okay, so let's edit another couple of images now. First of all, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to apply my main preset again, step one. Global changes now. I'm going to bring up the white balance, make it a bit warmer. About there, I would say. Now, notice on the histogram that there's a gap on the left-hand side and also the right-hand side. This basically means that I can bring down the shadow areas more by decreasing the blacks and I can also bring up the whites and that's going to give my image already more contrast and punch. Now you'll see that when I do that I am losing detail in the shadow areas 
around the couple. Lightroom's showing us that because they've gone into blue. However, this is a silhouette photograph. So in this instance, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I'm quite happy with that as a base. In fact, we can actually push the whites up a bit more. But I'm quite happy with that as a base image for us to go into stage three with. So let's go to brushes. And what I'm going to do here is apply a few brushes. First of all, I'm going to apply the Golden Gaze brush. I'm just going to warm up that light right in the middle like that. I'm now going to go to Mr. Blue Sky, so new, Mr. Blue Sky. And I'm doing this because we've got a bit of blue in the sky already. So I'm not, this is going to just exaggerate that blue. What I'll also do as well, however, though, is just apply Mr. Blue Sky to these areas as well down here because there is bits of blue in there, bits of purple, and it's just going to exaggerate that, which I quite like. Next, I'm going to apply a gradient filter and I'm going to burn in the sky. So let's go to gradient filter, new, and let's go to burn. And let's just drag down, it's going to just impact the sky like that. And I'm also going to do similar at the bottom half of the image, but this time I'm going to use the bokeh brush. So let's go to new and bokeh, because there's little bits here that I think will be embellished and look better when we use that brush. It's going to make them stand out a little bit more like that. Again, we remember we can always turn up the brush effect if we want to, or turn it down. It's entirely up to you where you want to leave that. I think that's all we will do. And finally, all I'm going to do is just apply a slight vignette for this. So we very quickly again, by going through the process, of applying our preset, making global changes, and then using our brushes, we've gone from here, a very flat, sort of dull image, but the potential is always there in the raw file, and we've gone to here, very, very quickly. Now let's just do another color image. Let's choose this photograph of Demi, because this one I can, I can illustrate something else. And as I've mentioned before in my videos, I always want to make the area of the photograph that I want your eye to look at the brightest point of the photograph. Now, with this photograph of Demi at the moment, the area that I think is brightest is the veil, because that is closest to the light source, which is a window on the left-hand side of the photograph. So I want to sort of rejig that brightest point so that it becomes Demi his face so let's show you how I do that so first of all I'm going to apply my main preset again now global changes I think I'm just going to bring down the exposure a little bit about there now the first thing that I'm going to do now and that, that will be it for global changes in fact I might just bring down the white balance slightly about there so what I'm going to do first of all is go to brushes new and faces I'm just going to go over Demi's face with the brush more so on the right hand side You'll see as well, I don't always get too worried about if I'm going over the actual areas of the face I've done there because the brush will also work to bring up the exposure of other areas. So that's all I need to do there with, with Demi's face. I'm now going to go to new and save highlights this time. Make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm just going to go over the veil just like that and maybe just a little bit here. And that is probably it. Again, I can change the strength of that if I want to. But I'm going to leave it about here, I would say. Now when we look at the photograph, and let's do before and after, do you see how the brightest point now has moved from being the veil to Demi's face? And that is just a visual trick that's going to make your eye look at Demi's face now, because I say the human eye will look at the brightest point of a photograph first. But we've done that very, very easily and very quickly by going through the process. Now I'm going to edit this image because I want to show you a black and white preset. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I have two black and white presets within the preset pack. One is just called black and white and the other one is black and white faces. Now the main difference between the two is that the faces preset is just a little bit softer. So obviously works well when faces are quite prominent in the frame as they are with this one. So I'm going to apply in this instance the faces black and white preset. Again from this point onwards it's the same process. So we've already applied the preset. Stage 2 is global changes. I think everything's just a little bit over in terms of exposure. So let's bring it all back. That will do. And now I'm going to go to brushes, new, and I'm going to apply faces brush just to go over face, face there. Only slightly, that's all we need. And I'm now going to just bring back the highlight slightly on face, dress, and chest. So let's go to the gradient filter this time and save highlights. And let's just go up. That will do, that's all we need. If anything, actually, I'm, I'm thinking that the exposure on face face is a bit strong, so I'm gonna go back to that brush and just turn it down slightly, about there, I would say. All I think I'll do now is just use the burn brush. So let's go to new, burn. I should have these turned on. 
and let's just go over just the areas that are already in shadow just to really exaggerate those areas and make the image pop a little bit more now notice as we do this that Lightroom is showing us a little bit of lost detail here so I'm going to now use a new brush and I'm going to use bring it back just to make sure that we're not losing detail that's all I would do literally that's all I need there's a little bit of distracting highlight in the top left so I'm just going to crop that out let's just do that very, again very very quickly and again, we've gone really quick from there to there. Now, just to show you the other black and white preset, I'm going to go to this photograph. Again, straight out of camera raw file. Let's now just apply the simple black and white preset. Now, obviously everything is very underexposed when we do this because the shadows are so low. So I can just bring the shadows back up a little bit and I'm also going to bring up the exposure. Remember doing this is global changes. So we'll go about here, I would say. Now let's use brushes new and faces just going to go over dad's face here like that i'm going to bring back the highlights so new save highlights you can see the area that we've just lost there but that we can just get rid of that like that i'm also going to just do that over holly's veil as well now if i look at this i think maybe dad's face is a bit too bright so let's just click on that brush again and just slightly bring down the strength of it that looks good. We've got a little bit of lost shadow details. So that'll be new. Bring it back. You'll see that after you use the, the process, the brushes after a while, it will become so second nature and then you can edit really, really quickly. And again, we've gone from there to there really, really quickly. Let's just do one more image. I'm going to choose this one because this is the first one we've done, which is off camera flash. So for this one, I'm going to use the lifting shadows preset because it's just a very underexposed photograph overall. So just apply that preset. I'm now going to crop in slightly just to even up the composition. Now I'm going to do global changes. So first of all, I'm going to bring up the exposure. We'll go about here I would say and now let's use our brushes so I'm going to go to new first of all there's a bit of blue in the sky so I'm going to use Mr. Blue Sky just to make that blue pop a little bit more like that I'm now going to use a new brush and golden gaze hope you can see that after a while you'll just fly through editing when you when you get used to the process and this is just making that warm light even warmer and a bit softer which I really like there's a bit of sort of distracting area at the bottom which I think we can just help by burning in so I'm going to go to graduated filter new and burn and let's just go up like that and finally I'm going to use another new brush and I'm just going to go to faces just to go over Sammy and James a little bit and then I think I'm just going to just decrease the power but again really quickly we've gone from there to there the process and the brushes make it really really quick to do this so I hope this video shows you firstly just how important the process is to editing efficiently in Lightroom but also the presets are just the first step in that process and that global changes and the brushes are just as important as the presets themselves. This video is obviously just a taster about how I edit my images in Adobe Lightroom but if you would like to see more of my editing tutorials then please consider joining my Patreon because there is literally hours worth of editing tutorials tutorials for you to watch in there plus so so many more benefits again the link if you're interested in joining the patreon is in the description and if you enjoyed this video you may also be interested in watching the live stream which i did recently as in that stream you can watch me editing many more images than i have done in this video so as always thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time